I assume MPP styles. Please That's proceed. correct. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, one second here. Uh, well, um, I want to start by uh, by thanking the minister for coming back here again today. Um, and to all the deputy minister and all the other staff that are there uh, um, to support him. Um, I have to say that I, I, I felt when I entered this, uh, this committee today, a little bit like I was entering an alternate universe listening to the minister speak. Um, like, like today didn't happen at all. Like the announcement didn't happen just a few hours ago that um, broke the hearts, I would say, of 2 million students in this province. Um, well, I can say that uh, I know the minister didn't want to share the news with us yesterday, but parents, education workers, and students have finally been given an answer from this government that schools will not be reopening this year. And I, I want to acknowledge how frustrating and deeply disappointing this is for all the students and their families and for the education workers who I know are also really missing their students and their colleagues. Um, we are now the only province where schools remain closed. We've been closed more weeks than any other province in this country. And uh, I know the premier likes to talk about population numbers and stuff, but I don't think this is it's quite as simple as that. I think uh, we all know it didn't have to be this way. And if the premier had listened to experts, this third wave could have been a lot less devastating than it's been. Uh, indeed, uh, Mr. Chair, I think if this minister had listened to experts and the experts in education, the, the workers themselves, the school boards, we could have had perhaps uh, we could have protected a few precious weeks of normalcy for our kids. Uh, minister, I heard you talking about providing choice to parents because um, I know we've got this great plan to expand this permanent online learning situation. <laughs> um, and I know that's what I, I gather that's what you think your legacy is going to be. Well, let me tell you this. This is a disaster of your making, of your government's making. This has not left parents with a choice. There are too many people who do not have choices out there. You talk about equity, but this situation has greatly, deeply increased inequities. Um, and the only people who seem to have had a choice here were yourself and the premier. So it's on you. Now, looking back, I wanna start um, some questions, uh, and I'm going to go back a little bit because this does impact directly the the the, the spending estimates that the, that the province has provided for the Ministry of Education, uh, which I think we would uh, we would argue are are, are unrealistic to say the least. Um, after the second wave, um, the schools were reopened. You claimed there were enhanced measures in place to protect students and staff and prevent more of these disruptive school closures. You said it over and over again. But despite that, I've heard from countless education workers and parents, and we've seen the evidence that class sizes were as big as ever, that there was no noticeable change in protective measures. Uh, we know there was no significant new investment. We know what happened next because cases went up exponentially, classes closed, then whole schools, then all schools. So my question is, what specific measures did your government put in place, and I mean new ones, since April 12th to today to ensure that schools could reopen safely this term? Well, thank you. Um, first off, we uh, announced $381 million in additional funding through the Safe Restart Agreement on February 1st of 2021. Uh, that is not an insignificant investment. Uh, in addition, we had the ICIP, the uh, Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program announcement in, uh, in the winter of 2021, about $650 million. While it was announced, as you will know, uh, late into 2020, the actual program, when the feds finally, you know, they reviewed the submissions, we provided them a few weeks after we received them in December, they then sent them back. We announced that with programs well underway to improve air ventilation. Uh, building upon the investments we made both uh, in the uh, in the spring, summer, rather summer of 2020, and again uh, in uh, in the fall of 2020, uh, that was um, uh, going to specifically support staffing. Uh, to be fair, in addition to additional provision of supports um, for transportation, uh, as well as the continuation of all the interventions we put in place. Uh, I think I will, if I may, just turn to the deputy who will have a bit Minister, more. Minister, if I may, I mean, what I really want is, is as I said, um, specific measures, not 
not announcements in February and re-announcements, or I, I want to know what specific measures, and perhaps um, I can be a little bit more specific to help you along here. Um, one of the key reasons why schools would be kept closed, according to the Premier, um, both in his letter last week and his announcement today, were vaccination rates for both students and staff. I want to know if you could provide us with a number now, today, current. How many teachers and education workers have received their first dose of the vaccine? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. The um, uh, the premier did note uh, we aim to increase vaccination rates over the summer to maximize the safety of schools. Uh, we've been very clear and consistent that while schools have been safe, our aim is to ensure with vaccine rates rising, we can make the environments within them even safer. That's why we've opened up. We're one of the first provinces to prioritize education staff starting April 12th. Uh, and of course, as you know, effective the 6th of May, all staff were eligible. To date, roughly 42.2% of education workers have received the first dose. Um, and I will note on May 23rd, youth be between the age of 12 and 17 were eligible to book a vaccine. This is good. We moved quickly with a commitment to a double dose. And the percentage of, um, of youth aged 12 to 17 receiving their first dose is just around 24%. Okay, thank you. Now, um, I know when the minister, when the premier announced it was 41, so I'm assuming it's gone up a percentage point or something since uh, the uh, letter last week. Um, that's that's significantly less than the general population, right? We're at what 62, 64 percent now. Um, why is uh, why is it so much less? Why do we only have 42.2 percent if they're supposed to be prioritized? Well, we were one of the first provinces to open up eligibility to workers. I, I couldn't speak for why that's the case. They had access to apply, like the general population, many of which, uh, about 80% of them up until the date we opened up, the, uh, for all education workers of the province, up 80% were already eligible by their age bracket. So I, I can't speak to why that there's that delta there, member. I appreciate it is lower than the provincial average in the general population. Quite a bit. But Quite that, a bit, considering but, that we're you know we're we're here like in this situation we're in now, it seems like a marked failure. Um, I also want to ask you um, how many have received their second dose to date. Uh, I cannot. Uh, I'm not sure, Deputy, if you would have that data. I know that we have 42% of first doses, and I also know that we're one of the first provinces to open vaccines. So I think the question would need to be asked. I think. Um, respectfully to to our uh, partners in both union or school boards i know that they're encouraging vaccines to be uh, received for those that want well i mean but minister i expect the ministry to know this right i mean you, you can't ask them to all cover all that right you, you must have a, a number so i'll ask you to please come to the next uh, meeting of the estimates committee um, with that information 